And welcome, Springfield, Missouri. Site of the 29th Annual National Christian Homeschool Basketball Championship. Scott Staten alongside Jeremy Caldwell just crowned the 5A Girls Gold Ball Champion, the Indianapolis Wildcats. Congratulations to them on their first. In this game, 6A Gold Ball up for grabs. The number one seed, OKC Storm, had a first round bye and then won by 22 yesterday against Reno County. They'll be facing the two seed, Chap Chariots. They were big winners against the Cash Eagles, their first game. And then a 23-point win against the Springfield Rush yesterday. We had that game, got to be able to see what this team has, and they're going to need a lot to go against this OKC Storm squad. Jeremy, had a last game was a pretty big win for the Wildcats, never really was in question. Uh, but this one, we're going to see if the Chariots can use that tough-nosed defense they have to be able to stay in this one and go against that firepower of the OKC Storm. Yeah, it also looks like the... Storm has a little size, and they got a little bit deeper bench. Looks like the Storm boys out here got a football teams. You know, we've got stormy weather here, and already the Storm played earlier and, and have won a couple times, and uh, I, it's almost just like it's meant to be for them. We just were given some storm war warnings in all seriousness. Uh, there are going to be thunder, severe thunderstorm warnings here in the Springfield area, so if you're listening and you're out and about, please be aware of that. Uh, I believe the warning you said goes up until – 6.45 or so. Yes, sir. That's what that's what we read. You also got to wonder that uh, being St. Patrick's Day is the chap, chap cha <laughs> chariots being the green jerseys. Is that going to bring them any luck today? Yeah, I said that earlier and finally got a team. And then here in the action, it was Mariah Curley. She takes it in. The senior puts it in there and gives her team a lead. And then on another breakaway, just like that, it is four to nothing. OKC Storm with the lead. Curley with two quick buckets. Chap Chariots, long pass down low. Daisy LaPat comes away with the ball and knocks it out of bounds, but she deflects it so that the Chariots can't get a play there. And as you said, let's see if that green comes into play. I've never believed in that anyway, but I know Notre Dame likes to wear their green uniforms when it's in the tournament and it's on St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. And being a Laker fan, you probably won't see me put on green. <laughs> There's a nice answer. Number 11, Kristen Hawk with the mid-range jumper. First points for her team. Chap Chariots out of Lansing, Michigan. They came in here and well-known in the Midwest region. Haven't done a lot of playing the Nationals, but glad they've been able to be a part of this. And they had a big win yesterday. Long three outside. Wow. What range that was, Amaya Weekly. One dribble behind the back, step back, and she just pulled it. Averaging 11 points a game for the Storm. Pressure there, but the Chap Cherry is able to get through that. Nymphs passes it over to the wing. Here's a three-point shot by Reeser. Reeser, that's no good. Rebound comes off, put back up by Bridget Crombie. And there they go. Another two points, seven to four. Six fourteen to go. Chariots not phased by the quick start by the Storm. Referee said his time. I'm not sure what happened. Oh, no. let her tie her shoes. She don't want to get no injuries. As we mentioned earlier, the refs have done a really good job of trying to keep the kids safe on the court. They have. Good job. And Curly already with a steal and a couple of layups, so you know she's got the possibility to run out of those shoes anyway, so you got to do what you can to keep those on your feet. Got to keep them tight. Curley passes it around. Here's another long three off the front of the rim into the hands of Nymphs for the Chariots. Chariots, though, throw that away. You've got to watch every single pass. Curley over to her left. Drive down low by Weekly, but this time taken away by Nymphs. Nymphs going to pass it on ahead to Osterley. Osterley going to bring it over the timeline, pressured and trapped. Gets the bounce pass up ahead to Hawk. Hawk drives, ball's knocked away, and going to be a tie-up, I believe. Jump ball will stay at this end. We're at the girls' 18U 6A gold ball championship. Full slate of games today. More tomorrow as we move on to the showdown series. Smooth jumper by Reeser over off the right elbow, and 7-6, her team within one now. OKC Storm. Going to bring it up here in their light blue. Chap Chariots in their green. This is the third game we've had here on this court today for the OKC Storm. The 16 new boys won a gold ball this morning. 
The 18 U boys won the 89th gold ball this afternoon, and the girls are going for the 90th gold ball <laughs> for the OKC Storm. That's a full day. That's that's a full program. I mean, holy cow. OKC always tough. They just seem to reload every year. Chap Chariots with the ball. They've actually got a chance to take the lead here. Pass in to Nyhart. Nyhart goes to her left, guarded by Weekly. Over in the ring to Reeser, who's already hit one jumper. Drive around the side to Osterly. Osterly back out and going to call travel there. She tried to stop and make the pass and slit her feet. She had Nymphs over in the corner. Even though Nymphs is their big, she can shoot from outside. But that time a turnover. 7-6. OKC Storm with the ball and the lead. Yeah, the, the OKC Storm, third game of the day for them, and every one of them has brought the pressure. Relentless defense, attacking the ball. Impressive shot there on the drive by Akajaya Handsome. She takes it in and was challenged by the cherry defender, but just went right through her and put the ball in the bucket. That time, ball's thrown away off the fingertips. Pass there from Osterley to Nyhart. Goes off of the chariot player, and it will go back to the OKC Storm. Halfway through this first period, the girls 18U 6A goal ball game. OKC Storm with a 9-6 lead. And been other, got other scores coming in. We talked about earlier, if you've been watching the games, how they're going to reseed things for the showdown series with 18U and 16U. And uh, Jeremy, we'll have you give some of the scores that have been coming in from other sites. Uh, in case you're not aware, this is just one of the many sites. This is where we're live streaming today. But we've got games all over the city. And wow, nice drive there. Amaya Weekly dribbles between her legs, goes down the right side, kisses it off the glass, and gives her team a five point lead. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk about some of the games we have coming up, also some of the games that are taking place elsewhere, and some of the finals so you'll know what's going on and what we're going to see tomorrow. Right now it's 11-6, OKC Storm in the lead. When my body needs relief, I real-time it. I'd like to introduce you to my knockout pain formula, real-time pain relief. Its soothing lotion is rich in nature's ingredients and helps me manage discomfort day or night. Mmm, and it smells great too. From muscle strains to soreness to simple back aches and arthritis, real time it and knock out your pain. It works for me and it will work for you. Real time pain relief, it's a knockout. And welcome back. Jeremy, we got some uh, results coming in from other games that were not at our site and some important gold ball finals. Yeah, the number one seed Lubbock Titans punched their ticket earlier today versus the Illinois Crusaders. Won that game 56 to 20 in the 8A. In the 5A, the Wildcats up over the NCC Warriors, which is a game that we just had. And uh, we'll get the others on the next break in action here. Storm knocked it away, but the Chariots come up with it. Start to lose it again. Gather it back in. Crombie, she won't give up on the play. There's an inside pass to the Chariots. Find a wide open. Chap player down low, and that looked like Crombie put it in there. I'm not sure that was Crombie or Hawk. We could not see. There was a lot of traffic. But the score now 11-8. OKC Storm in the lead. There's the drive by Curley. She draws the foul. It's going to be on four green. That's Crombie. Some of the other scores from the girls games. Yeah, in the 4A, we had the uh, number one seed KC East Lions, which we had earlier today here, beat the San Marcos Panthers 73 to 35. And in 3A, the number one Noah Jaguars barely squeaked by the Cincinnati Trailblazers as the three seed, 47 to 46. And then here we have the 6A game between the OKC Storm and the Chap Chariots. And over at the Parkview High School is the last girls 18U game between the number one seed Dallas Thunder and the number three MHEA Eagles. MHEA always in the mix, and it'll be interesting to see as a strong Dallas team. Ball's bounced around, ends up in the hands over of right, Reeser, rather. She can't get it to go. Off the board comes Weekly. She passes on ahead. That's up to her teammate who puts it up and draws the foul. That's Macy Crandall. Averaging 12.3 a game, the junior. Haven't seen her in yet, but she comes in and gives them some firepower off of the bench. So we know now 
Most of the uh, field starting, the picture starting to be set as the first free throw is good. 12-8 now for OKC. We know four of the six. Once our game and the Dallas Thunder MHEA Eagles game is done, then the reseeding will happen. And I'm sure there'll be a post sent out and then everybody will know their game times and opponents for tomorrow. Second free throw is good. 13-8 lead now for OKC. And, yeah, you'll know it when we know it. We don't even know until the reseeding is done who we're going to have tomorrow. So we can't even tell you what games are going to be live streaming yet. Uh, but we can know this. They're going to be some good ones. And uh, not only girls' games, they're going to be boys' games all over the city. They've been going on. We've got a timeout here. And uh, some of the boys' uh, finals that we have already seen today and some that are coming in from around the area, Jeremy, that uh, are going to kind of set the stage for the boys' undisputed showdown series. Yeah, and I apologize on the girls. They are not reseeding the girls. Okay. So that bracket is being built as we speak. The Lubbock Titans being the number one overall seed have advanced, and they will receive a bye tomorrow okay. morning. And then the winner of the Dallas Thunder game, I believe, will receive a bye. And then uh, the winner of this game looks like they're going to play the Noah Jaguars. Interesting. And then on the other side, you've got the Wildcats. They won. And then you're going to have the Wildcats who are going to play the KC East Lions at 11.30 here at the BBC tomorrow. And we saw them, and they're loaded as well. And then following that game at 12.45 will be the winner of this game playing the Noah Jaguars. Nymphs put a three-pointer up, no good. And then on the rebound putback attempt, Osterley unable to connect. It remains 13-8. OKC Storm, weekly passes it, and that ball is tipped and picked off by Nymphs. Nymphs gives it on up ahead. To Osterley. Osterley back to Nymphs. Nymphs. Cross court pass. Here's a three point attempt by Hawk. That is too strong. Rebound though comes off to Osterley. Osterley back to Nymphs. Back to Hawk. She can't get it to go. Rebound to Weekly. Here comes the storm. Weekly brings it over the timeline. Dribbles behind her back. Stops. Thought about it. She can hit it from out there. Swings it over to Crandall. Back in the hands now of Crandall. And then back to Weekly. Weekly's going to drive to her left. Crandall from the corner puts it up, and that is no good. And here comes the Chap Chariots. Yeah, Scott, through all the games we've done yesterday and today, we have seen a lot of baskets and balls rim in and out of the baskets here at the BBC. Ball was turned over there by the Chariots, and yeah, we have. They've, uh, you know, we talked about it. It's we know these rims work because they worked for uh, 80 plus points several times in the last couple of days. That is correct. We've had one double overtime game yesterday on the broadcast. We've had two overtime games today, and we're not finished yet. We got this game and two more following this. So uh, this is what you play for when you get to the. Semifinals of the Go Ball games and Go Ball Championship games. Competition gets stiff. Does. There with the Storm with their own turnover. That gives the Chariots an opportunity to cut into this five point lead that OKC has built with 110 left to go here in the first. Inbounds. Going to bring it up the court. Full court pressure. Able to get past it all was Lena Nyhart. Nyhart tries to throw it on ahead, but that ball is tipped away and into the hands of LaPat. But then it back, goes back into the hands of Hawk. Hawk over the middle, kicks out. It's going to be a fake three-point attempt. She hesitates, drives, puts it up and in off the glass. Strong move to power that in by Crombie. That was a tough shot. I don't know if she even got the shot off, but much less to make it. I don't even know if she saw the rim. <laughs> Sometimes coaches teach you that. Just throw it towards the rim. Let's see what happens if you can get a foul. 13 to 10, 33 seconds to go. OKC's going to, looks like, back it out and try to get the last shot of this quarter. They lead it by three. Chap Chariots glancing up at the clock, getting her in their defensive stances and going to try to make a stop here and go in with no worse damage than a three-point deficit. Coach putting them in position, telling them where to be. 10 seconds left, here goes Weekly. She goes into motion, dribbles between her legs, goes to her right, after the, uses the pick, stops, pops a three. That's off the front, rattles around. On the rebound attempt, the putback is blocked by Crombie, 
And that's how we'll end the first quarter. So at the end of one here in the girls 18U 6A Gold Ball Championship game, it's the one seed OKC Storm leading the two seed Chap Chariots 13 to 10. We'll be back after a short timeout. When my body needs relief, I real time it. I'd like to introduce you to my knockout pain formula, real time pain relief. It's soothing lotion, it's rich in nature's ingredients, and helps me manage discomfort day or night. Mmm, and it smells great too. From muscle strains to soreness to simple back aches and arthritis, real time it and knock out your pain. It works for me and it will work for you. Real time pain relief, it's a knockout. Welcome back. Second quarter action here. The girls 18U 6A Gold Ball. We are in Springfield, Missouri. Just want to make you aware if you are here at the game or you are in Springfield, there is some severe weather in the area. So you want to stay tuned to your local radio and uh, check in your phones, local broadcast, as there are some severe thunderstorm warnings, some warnings of hail, and even some possible tornadoes. So be careful out there. On the inbound, Scott Staten, and along with Jeremy Caldwell, and so far, it seems like an uneventful first period. It's a 13 to 10 game. Neither side really flexing their muscles on uh, really taking control of this game. The Storm uh, early on got a couple of quick buckets, but then the Chariots kind of settled things down. We're able to get back into it and just trail by three now in the second. Yeah, just by watching the flow of game, you would think the Storm have a pretty good handle on it. Then you look at the scoreboard and they're only up three. There's a long three attempt by OKC. That's no good number 34 and we apologize but we've got a different player named for 34 and 25 so not sure which one's which so we're just going to call them by the numbers at this point that shot attempt by Osterley is no good but she gets her own rebound but then in the attempt to gather it back in she was pressured by Mariah Curley and she travels another turnover for the chariots, you got to wonder if the chariots have been able to clean this up a little. And I know the storm are causing that some with their pressure, right? But uh, they they really just that they're even only three down. Uh, they have to feel good about that. Yeah, they've uh, they've had a couple opportunities fall short, and yet they're still only down three here in this game. Feed it down low, and then Wart Nymphs keeps her hand straight up, and the official says no contact. On the other end, the drive all the way. It is up and good, and they call the block foul. Crombie with a chance for the three-point play to tie things up. I believe they're going to give her that block because she was too far under the basket. Akajaya handsome. She was set up, but I think you're right. It looked like they were – the official said she was too far under there. Got to give them places to land, and that's going to be a foul. Only the first team foul, according to the scoreboard. That shot is no good, and so they don't, they're unable to tie it up. But then on the forward pass, that ball is knocked out of bounds by Kristen Hawk. It'll stay down at the OKC end. Handsome with the inbounds. Here's Curly with the ball. She leads the team in assists, and you can tell she runs the show. She knows the plays and tries to get people in the right positions. Pass out top to 25. That's over to Weekly. Weekly. Cross court pass. 25 is going to drive. Flip it over to back to Curly. Curly going to reset. She's got an open lane. If she wants it, she's going to drive. Try to head there, but then the ball is tapped away. And then they said it was kicked by the storm, so it's going to go to the Chariots. Maybe some of that green St. Patrick's Day luck is working. Uh, maybe it's starting to work out. They're only down one. They have an opportunity to take the lead here. Ball is inbounded. 
Chariots throw it on ahead, and Nymphs chases it down. Looked like it might have been an errant pass, but she's able to gather it in. Now she's trapped down in the corner, gets it in. As she tried to make the pass back to Osterley, that ball was stolen away by the Storm, and it's going to be tied up, 34 for the Storm. Came away with it. We think that's Macy Crandell, but we're not sure about that because we've got a couple of different names with that number. And then the tie-up, it's going to stay down at this end with possession. That inbounds pass attempt knocked away by Handsome. They'll have to reset. Chariots trailing 13 to 12, 6.17 to go. Got an open player there, Nymphs down low. She's going to spin, go against the big for OKC, puts it up with the left hand. Comes off the front of the rim, back in the hands of Nymph. She's going to bring it out and try to reset. Gathered, uh, she had three different players around her. She gathers it in, throws it over to Hawk, who cannot get the shot to go. Back the other way come the Storm. All the way, Weekly puts it up and in. Amaya Weekly, another bucket, and her team's lead is now three. She's had a nice offensive game so far to start this game. Crombie with the ball for the Chariots. He's going to drive the lane, put up the left-handed floater, and misses everything. And off to the board comes the Storm. They're going to push it the other way. Curly with the tempo, but then that pass is picked off by Osterley and knocked out of bounds. It will stay at this end with the OKC Storm. Yeah, she tried to thread the needle there between two defenders, and good job on the Chariots to get back on defense and not allow that fast break layup. Coach Prince Azila for the OKC Storm, trying to bring home another, as you mentioned, Gold ball, the 90th in program history for including girls and guys. Yeah, because the uh, the boys 12U won one first thing this morning, which was their 87th. On the inbounds, a nice feed into the interior. And Daisy LaPat goes up with the shot. She is fouled. So Pat is quite a presence on the inside, Jeremy. She's a senior averaging over 11 points and 10 rebounds a game. Yeah, she's a big body in the in the post, and she knows how to use her body well on them uh, post moves. First shot is good. So the uh, the Lady Storm here are trying to conclude a quadruple goal ball day for the OKC Storm. And somehow I feel like they've done that before. <laughs> I got a feeling that's not their first if you've uh, going for 90. You've had to do that a couple times. Sinks both free throws. Chariots bring it quickly the other way. And a lot of contact. Player tripped up. Hawk can't get the ball. Going to be a jump ball. It'll go back to the OKC Storm. Nope, they're going to say it stays down at this end. Looks like a couple times the Chariots have been able to beat the pressure by the Storm, but then they make a sloppy pass or are tripped up and just unable to do anything with it. Still just down five. There's another tipped ball. Weekly throws it on ahead. Number 34 takes it all the way down. We think that's Crandall. She puts it up and rolls off the front of the rim. She'll have a chance to give some more points to her team on the free throw line. Okay, 25 for the Storm is Macy Candle, Crandall, and 34 is Maddie Crandall. Got it. So they are sisters. That's why we were getting confused. So on the free throw line right now is Maddie Crandall. Well, at least we got the last name right, right? That's correct. Second shot is good. 18 to 12 now. The lead is six. And official calls a timeout here. I believe that's a warning. Oh. Told uh, 20 for the storm to leave the ball alone. So that was their first warning. Next one will be a technical. That's hard not to do when you get in the habit of that. Once the ball goes in and you just tap it. If you play a lot of playground ball, that happens all the time. But this is not the playground. Here we go. Pass on up ahead. Number 20 puts it up for the Chariots. That's Karen Nymphs. She can't get it to go, but she's called for the turnover. Yeah, she bobbled the ball a little bit and shuffled her feet there. Got called for the traveling. But once again, like we've been saying for three days here, when you get yes. opportunities, you got to take advantage of them. <laughs> you do, especially when you're coming in as an underdog. Correct. Playing the powerhouse of the OKC Storm, and you're playing a tight, close game, you've had plenty of opportunities, just hadn't been able to convert. 
Daisy LaPad had an open look there, but she was guarded toughly by Karen Nemps, and then that ends up in a scoring opportunity down at the other end. Chariots put it in. They just trail by four now. That was a great find there by the Chariots. That shot is no good by Weekly. Scramble for the ball on the floor, and she was out of bounds. She touched the ball. Good hustle on her part by Nyhart, but when she touched the ball, she was sitting on the end line. And so we're going to have a timeout here. Going to take a short break. We'll be back. Score is 18-14. OKC Storm in this 18U 6A Gold Ball Championship. And welcome back. Back to action here, second quarter. Just about halfway through in this girls 6A Gold Ball Championship games. Nice spin move by Daisy LaPat. She puts it in. And the lead now six for the OKC Storm over the Chap Chariots out of Michigan. They break the press that time. Over on the right side is Nemps. Nemps going to dribble, bring it back out. Pass it out up top to Reeser. Reeser looking down low. Ball is kicked, but she... Gathers it back in, Anna Hawk drives, puts it up in an up and under and draws the foul. I believe that's gonna be on LaPat. Nope, they're gonna call that on 25, which is Macy Crandall. And that's gonna be Anna Hawk at the free throw line with a chance to pull her team within five or four, depending on how she does here. First shot, no good. Yeah, the, the Lady Storm here have just not been able to pull away. They've had They've also had opportunities to extend their lead in the game and just haven't been able to at this point. And the uh, Chap Chariots here are staying within striking distance. Only down five now after that free throw. And uh, if you're the Lady Storm, you, you want to kind of extend that lead going into the half. 20 to 15, 342 to go. Chariots hanging around. OKC, cross court pass. Weekly can shoot from there. Here's going to be a three attempt by Macy Crandall, and it's good. She okay. shot that with some confidence. Yes, she did, and they've got some shooters. 23-15 now. OKC with the lead. Chariot's trying to break this press. Drives up the right side, bodied, contact, knocked out of bounds, and going to stay on this end. On the inbounds, Nymphs, she's going to drive on LaPat. Stop and spin, and wisely right there was Weekly. She came down and expected the spin move as Nymphs had driven down to her left and came in and tied the ball up. Possession will go back to OKC. Heads up play by Weekly. She brings it down, feeds it down low. Ball is tipped. Daisy LaPat comes up with it. Ball hits the backboard on her shot attempt, and out comes Reeser with the ball. She kicks it back to Nymphs. Nymphs. Going to bring it up the court, going to stop. Cross-court pass, got to cut her down low, put it up and in. Nice find, Bridget Crombie put it in there. Looked Chet. like a broken play, but it results in two points. The Lady Chariots are doing a, a good job of moving the ball, finding the open, open player there, they, which they did the same thing yesterday. They, they do a good job of moving the ball, involving everyone in the game plan. 23-17, and that time it was... Maddie Crandall, and she was able to draw the contact and the foul. That's going to be a foul on number three for the Chariots there. Anna Hawk. First shot, no good. And substitution now, that is Karen Nymphs coming in, substituting for Anna Hawk, who drew that last foul. 2.30 to go here, second period. The winner... Claims the 6A gold ball title and moves on to the showdown series. We've already crowned several champions today. 
And as we corrected ourselves, they're not going to reseed as the second goes in, as they are in the boys' uh, showdown series. And so we're going to be able to see ahead of time a couple of buys for the top two seeds. Ball is tipped. OKC comes up with the steal. Here's Weekly, the three off the front of the rim, but Daisy LaPat right there to clean it up. Strong move right there on the rebound and the putback. 26-17, Chariots break the pre uh, press this time. They bring it down, get their own opportunity to score. Once again, there's Crombie, and Crombie taking advantage of this press. When they're able to get the ball to her, she's been able to cut to the basket and hit some jumpers. Yeah, that's the silky left-handed shooter that we, we had yesterday here. And uh, Addie Crandall couldn't get that three to fall. Chariots coming the other way. Nice pass. That time Crombie gave, up, gave it up to Karen Nemps, and Nemps stopped and popped and rolled in, and now it's 26-21. 1.36 to go. Just when the storm started to build their lead, Chariots trimmed four more points off of it. Weekly with the drive. She loses the ball. Down on the floor is Hawk. Hawk gives, comes up with it. Passes on ahead. Looks over ahead. Ellie Reeser. Reeser chases it down. Pass over the middle. That's Hawk. She puts it up and going to be a blocking call. Boy, that's the second time for Handsome that she's been set up and thought she had position. But the officials see it the other way. And that's two different times she's had a blocking call and given opportunities now for the Chariots to try to sink two more three th free throws and trim this lead. Yeah, I, mi I missed that one. I, I didn't, wasn't able to see if she was in position or not. I was watching the ball out here. and By the time I looked in the paint, she was on her way down. <laughs> so I'm not sure. Yeah, you can't blink. Or there, I mean, especially we've seen this so much today, really this whole week. These pressing teams, if you blink or you turn away from your – TV or your phone if you're watching online, uh, you look up and it's like, whoa, when did those points happen? Yeah, and the Chariots have done a good job of sticking with their game plan. They've broken through the pressure a little bit and found the open girl there. And nope. That. No good that time, but Crombie came down with the rebound and then made a pass that was picked off by the Storm, and they're going to bring it the other way. Missed opportunity. Once again, as we said all week, I believe somebody <laughs> on the broadcast. Somebody. Say, if you're trying to make a comeback and you're at the free throw line, you got to make them count. That's right. Mariah Cur Curley makes them pay. She brings it all the way to the other end and scores. And then there on the reach-in foul, that's going to be another one on the OKC Storm. Just the fourth team foul, so they'll throw it inbounds near the half-court line. 28-21, OKC up by seven with under a minute to go here in the second period of the 6-8 gold ball title game. Pass by Reeser on up ahead to Hawk, and that's a turnover. Yeah, the pressure there caused her to stutter step and shuffle her feet a little bit. Wasn't able to put the ball down. I don't think she was expecting the defender to be right there when she turned around. Maddie Crandall gives the ball back to her point guard, Mariah Curley. Curley with 44 seconds to go in the half. Her team leading by seven. OKC Storm in the light blue. Chap Chariots out of Michigan in the dark green. 33 seconds. Looks like Great. the Storm fan base is trying to get in the, in the game with the chant of the OKC here in the last 25 seconds. Passing the ball around, waiting as they did at the end of the first period. Crandall's going to drive, but bring it back out. Curl around, 16 seconds to go. Being pressured there by Hawk. She kicks it back out. That pass is picked off. Boy, Bridget Crombie has been super active today on both ends of the court and really keeping the Chariots in this game. She has. She's been very aware of where the ball is. She's been around the ball. She's had deflection. She scored on the offensive side. On Almost. the inbounds, eight seconds to go. Here comes Curley. Drives it all the way down the lane, puts it up, and rolls off the rim. On the rebound, put back, no good, and that's how the half's going to end. With the score, the OKC Storm leading the Chap Chariots 28-21. We'll go to a halftime break and be back with the second half action after this timeout.
And welcome back to Springfield, Missouri. Storm just now coming out of their halftime meeting, trying to go over some things and clear them up. And Chariots were waiting on them. We're actually waiting on a real storm to blow through here in the next 30, 45 minutes. So be careful if you're in the Springfield area. Make sure you're aware of that. And uh, we will try to keep you up to date with any updates or changes that we're given. Chariots will have the ball to start here. They trail by seven. Got an uphill battle, but they've been in this game the entire time. Here's a three from Nymphs. That's off the front of the rim. But Bridget Crombie, as she's been the whole first half, right there where she should be for the Chariots, but then the ball is thrown away through the hands of Nymphs. That's the turnover. Ball will go to the Storm. Yeah, that one had a little heat on it. OKC Storm and the powder blue. Chap Chariots in the dark green. Chariots trying to win their first gold ball. Storm trying to win the 90th in program history with their guys and girls. Down the left side comes Weekly. Nice touch off the glass. Daisy Lapat there to clean it up and put it back in. 30-21 now, OKC in the lead. Bringing the ball up is Reeser. She stops and passes a dangerous pass, and that is tipped away. And going the other way comes Micaiah Johnson. Johnson takes it in. No good. Rebound there. Put back up by Curley. It's no good. Gets her own rebound. Is going to dribble it out and reset things. And the smart move by the point guard, which you expect your senior point guard to know what to do, when to do. And then that is a... <laughs> I don't even think that's that's beyond an NBA three that was taken by Weekly, but she can't get it to drop. And on the jump ball, it's going to stay down at this end. Yeah, she was a foot or two behind the college line out yeah. here. At first, I thought she was on the bench. Yeah. Amaya Weekly, she is not bashful taking those long shots, but she can hit them too. On the inbounds, long pass, and that goes over the head of her teammate. That's going to be a turnover on the Storm. Jarrett with a chance now to Storm. make something happen on the offensive end. Storm once again struggling to extend the lead there. They had a couple opportunities at the goal and uh, just couldn't get them to fall. Jarrett's drive and uh, bring it over the half-court line. There's Nymphs. Nymphs plays down low for them, but she can also shoot from outside. And then that time, I believe that's going to be Reeser called for the moving screen, illegal screen. Yep, number five. That's first foul of this half. First one on the Chap Chariots. Early substitution here in the second half for the Chap Chariots. After this one, our final two games of the day. We've had a full slate. I think another 11 games, but the next one will be the couple of boys 18U gold ball games. Tyler Heat and Dallas HSAA. And then the F HFC Warriors and the Cincinnati Trailblazers. On this end, Storm misses shot. But right there to clean it up again is Daisy LaPat. She can't put it back in this time, but she does draw the foul. 6.31 to go. She's done a really good job on the offensive boards tonight and uh, trying to get the cleanup duty. Yep. We talked about some of the changes this year as LaPat puts the first one in. Lead up to 10 now. And uh, one of the other changes is there's usually, they try to have eight different classes, but this year six with the girls. And uh, that's resulted in a couple of first round buys for some of the top seeded programs tomorrow. And like we said, that will be all worked out a little bit later on as we still have this game going on and another one across town. Chariots bring it the other way. We'll try to give you updated on that Dallas Thunder game as soon as we can. Uh, there's a tie up again and going to stay down at this end. We know, though, that the winner of this game will go on to face the Noah Jags, who won in a close one, a one-point win over the Cincinnati Trailblazers. That had to be a nail-biter. We've yeah. had a few of those today. Wish, yeah, we, as if we needed another, but I wish we could see some highlights from that. There's a long shot by Nymphs, but that is partially blocked. Storm come off with the rebound. 32-21 lead and the ball. Weekly. Feeds it down low. There's Handsome. She is hacked by Isabel Osterley. Handsome will be on the line. So we know that one's set. And then in the other game tomorrow with the girls' showdown series, it will be the Indianapolis Wildcats, which we just saw win their first gold ball, taking on the KC East. Which we also team. just saw. And they just won their first. So that's going to be a uh, – one of the two is going to be in uncharted territory for sure after that one. Handsome with the first shot is good. 
And they get the joy of facing the Lubbock Titans. <laughs> oh, man. After that game. Lubbock, the number one team in the country. Hanson with her second shot. Meanwhile, uh, we're being told that the 18U boys will be reseeded, and we believe the 16U boys, although we're, that's not confirmed, which means we won't know till later tonight who's playing who in their showdown series. Pass on up ahead to the Chariots. Crombie will drive and draw the foul. Crombie really has kept the Chariots in this game. She has been involved in just about every possession on defense and on offense. And really, they're riding her. They need to uh, get some other people involved because we saw yesterday their defensive hard-nosed play is tough, but got to get some points if you're going to beat the Storm. That time, Crombie can't get the ball to go. The rebound on the uh, far side comes down. Crombie with it back in her hands. She switches it over to Hawk. Hawk's going to dribble to her right. Gives it back to Reeser. Reeser to Crombie. Crombie, the drive. Nice seal down low by her teammate. To be able to allow her to run in there, that was Karen Nemps who set up down on the paint, and Crombie made him pay. Now off the miss, there's the rebound. Pass was knocked down, but comes right back to Anna Hawk. Hawk gets it to Crombie. Crombie drive, another lay-in off the bucket, and that's going to be a charge. a charge. Couldn't tell if he was saying it counted or a charge, but that is going to be an offensive foul. That's a tough break because Crombie just made a really good move. She just scored previously on a drive, and then this time made the move down low, but the Storm player was set up and drew the charge. And even though Handsome tried to draw two charges earlier and got calls for the blocking foul, she still stood in there to draw that charge for the third time. 5.14 to go here in the third, 34-23. I'm sure she was happy to see it finally go her way. Absolutely. Okay, see Storm fans making some noise as their team is up by 11. Trying to claim another gold ball. Weekly behind the back dribble. Drives strong through the lane. Kicks it back out top. That was Johnson who drove. Caught the ball on her hip but able to maintain control. Missed the shot too strong. Nymphs with the rebound. Back the other way. Anna Hawk for the Chariots. Chariots trying to cut into this lead. She goes up. A lot of contact. No foul though as LaPat was there to bother her. Ball is once again loose. Picked up by... This time, Nymphs. Nymphs gets over to Reeser now. The Nymphs sisters have done a really good job of controlling the boards. They have, and there's Crombie inside. Works up against LaPat and puts it in. Sometimes guarding a left-hander when you're not used to it, it throws you off. That time, a drive, and there was some contact. Uh, Curley looked and questioned the official as he smiles and Says it was inadvertent, and the ball goes out of the cherry on the cherry player. Nine-point lead for the Storm halfway through this third period. Speaking of the Nymph sisters, Rachel comes in to join her sister on the floor, and they're going to try to play with both of them dominating the inside. Pat kicks it out to Johnson. Here's a drive by Handsome, puts it up off the board. She was challenged by the younger Nymphs and goes on ahead to Crombie. Here comes Crombie the other way. She's going to push it, stop. Has a cutter down the lane. There's Nymphs. Nice move. Puts it up and in. Lead cut back down to seven. 34-27. Under four minutes to go here in the third. 6A girls 18U gold ball title game. Yeah, Crombie's also done a, a good job of not only scoring, but also finding the open teammates, making a smart pass. Yeah, I think the Storm players thought she was going to go all the way in there, but instead she just dumped it off, and Nymphs made a nice little move. Meanwhile, they get the steal of their own, and as she was coming down, got bumped and uh, stepped out of bounds. That was Lena Nyhart. Turnover again on the Chariots. Seven-point lead. They just keep hanging around. you got to wonder... At some point, are they going to be able to make a little run to get past this six, seven point deficit and make it a game? Yeah, they've got it to six or seven a couple times, and it's back to seven right now with three and a half to go here in the third. Pass inside. They go to LaPat, and she is so strong. Nice spin move. Went to her left, back to her right, and put it in off the backboard. 36 27. Nemps, Rachel Nemps. Her own spin move, drives and puts it in. We haven't seen a lot of that. We did yesterday, but yeah. finally she's able to make a move on LaPat, and they're going to need to go to kind of go back to that well a little bit more. And that was big on big on both ends of the floor. Yeah, but see, both big gals making some great moves there. On the drive, 
Hurley can't get it to go, but she fights for it and comes back. Ball is tipped out of bounds off of the chariot hands. Storm will retain possession. Another substitution, Isabel Osterley comes in for the Chap Chariots. Out goes Karen Nemps. And the Storm with the inbounds. Crandall gets it into Weekly. Back to Crandall, who feeds it down low to LaPat. Here she goes again. Strong move. Partially blocked. And ball comes off of the Storm player. She can't get it to go, and it'll be another opportunity for the Chap Chariots to crack past that seven-point barrier that they have not been able to get past so far. Coming the other way, Rachel Nemps. She's going to pull it out. Stops, looking for some help. Trapped in the corner. Spin move, that is Osterly. Osterly shot just a little strong. Comes off the side of the rim. And then we've got a official's whistle. I think he's checking on the clock, not sure. Is there is some discussion there. Yeah, the clock hadn't started. So after the shot came off and the storm came down with it, he went ahead and blew the whistle so that they can take some time off the clock to make up for whatever time did not disappear as it wasn't started on time. Back into live action now, 36-29, the Storm with the lead in the ball. Amaya Weekly gives it over to Crandall. Back to her sister, Crandall. Back out top, Weekly thinking about it. Stops, pops, just a little bit short. And Rachel Nymphs with the rebound. On up ahead to Kristen Hawk. Hawk's got Crombie on the left side, but she's going to take it all the way. Cannot get it to go, but the ball yeah, comes off of the floor and goes into the hands of the Chariots. That was number 23, Lena Nyhart. Not sure what the call was there. Not seeing any clear distinction. I think they called a foul, possibly, on the Chariots. I'm not sure. I, I didn't see either referee motion to the table. If there was a foul, who it was on. But uh, we do know it's the storm ball. We do know that, and we know neither team discussed anything or seemed like they had a problem with what was called, so we'll continue on here. There's a wide open look for Mashiah Johnson. She can't get it to go. Ellie Reeser for the Chariots. Up to Nymphs. Nymphs over the side to Anna Hawk. Hawk being trapped. Her pass over to Nymphs is picked off. Here comes Crandall all the way in and rolls off the right side. And then in a battle for the rebound, Curly comes, or uh, Weekly comes away with it. But Rachel Nymphs, long pass. That is picked off by Crandall. Crandall gets it over to Weekly, who puts it up. No good. The Storm, is, the storm has uh, extended their defense back to full court pressure here. They have in a some sloppy play here. Both teams just cannot get anything to go. Missing shots, turning the ball over. This time it ends with a foul on the OKC Storm. That's going to be on Amaya Weekly. So we have got confirmation that the 16 new boys will also not recede. Okay. And they will be bracketed along just like the 18 new girls as they are already set for tomorrow. We'll talk about that here in just a break. Rachel Nymphs with the spin around move. Gets it out to Osterley. Osterley takes it up and puts it in and the foul. And they get past that seven point mark finally. They get it to five and this free throw could put it to four. Two possession ball game now. These are dangerous kind of games where it feels like OKC has been in control, but they've just really kind of kept the Chariots at arm's length and the Chariots just keep fighting away, fighting away. And you look up and with a minute to go here in the third period, it is just a five point game. Osterley. Yeah, the Lady Storm just can't seem to put them away. Free throw's good, and the deficit now down to four. Here comes the Storm with a minute to go in the third period of this 6A girls gold ball championship game. Curly going to survey the court, look at the Chariots defense, and decide what she's going to do. Looks like they're going to try to hold for one shot if they're able to. Yeah, she's such a good ball handler. It's really tough, although some good defense being played there. Just enough to try to get a five-second call, but then she'll dribble her way out of it. 30 seconds to go here in the quarter. Storm willing to just let that clock wind down, although here she comes. Curly down the lane, kicks it out. Now they're going to bring it back out. Hanson with the ball, and, oh, that was a tough pass. Almost got picked off. Lena Nyhart tried to cut into the passing lane there. 14 seconds to go. Weekly with the ball. Back up against the timeline. She's being guarded by a Hawk. 
She tries to dribble through two players. Ball's on the floor. Crandall comes away with it. She drives, puts it up, switches hands. No good. One second left. And that's how the quarter will end. Got to count that one as a victory for the Chariots. They're able to keep it close. And so we will head into the final period of play with the gold ball on the line for the girls 6A with the OKC Storm leading by a slim margin, 36-32 over the Chap Chariots. Back with the final quarter of action after this break. When my body needs relief, I real time it. I'd like to introduce you to my knockout pain formula, real time pain relief. Its soothing lotion is rich in nature's ingredients and helps me manage discomfort day or night. Mmm, and it smells great too. From muscle strains to soreness to simple back aches and arthritis, real time it and knock out your pain. It works for me and it will work for you. Real time pain relief, it's a knockout. Welcome back, fourth quarter action. Girls, 6A goal ball championship, and it's a close one here. OKC Storm, the one seed, with a four point lead over the Chap Chariots out of Michigan. Chariots with the ball and a chance to cut it even closer, although right there's a turnover, but they come back up with it. Osterley puts it up. That shot is short. Rebound comes off to Mariah Curley, and she tells her girls, get down the court, I got this. Mariah Curley brings it over the timeline. Listen to instructions from her coach. Princess Zila, she's gonna set up their play. Goes to her left, strong dribble. Tries to do the bounce pass inside, but the Chariots defense right there, they knock it out of bounds. Combination of Crombie there, and I believe Nymphs able to knock the ball out of bounds. Yeah, Scott, we got seven and a half minutes left in a four point game to decide who's gonna move forward to that gold ball final six. Winner takes on the Noah Jags. An inbounds pass, Handsome gets it blocked. And up with the ball comes Kristen Hawk. Another opportunity for the Chariots to cut into this. Nice pass, skip pass over to the left, or right wing, and a three-pointer put in by Ellie Reeser, and we've got a one-point ball game. She stepped right into that and had no instinct into what she was gonna do. This Chariots, a hard-nosed team coming out of the Midwest, unintimidated. Playing their game. There's a shot by Handsome. That's no good. Boy, Chariots got their hand on the ball, but the official said it was right there and said the storm knocked it out of Osterley's hand. So it will come Chaps' way. Now we see the full court press again. Reeser with the ball. The pass to Nymphs. Nymphs to Reeser. It's nice to have a, a big like that that can help you out on the break. Reeser gets it over the timeline. She is trapped, and the ball is taken away by Mariah Curley. Curley gets it on ahead up to Crandall. Crandall going to go over to her left. Finds her sister for the three. That is short. Rebound comes off to Osterley. Osterley bumped from behind by Lopat. Or Lopat, and that's going to be another foul on her. Fourth team foul on the OKC Storm. It will be Chariot's ball trailing by one with 6.36 to go here in the final quarter of play. Both teams at four team fouls, so neither team's in the bonus yet. Still have a couple fouls to give on each before you get to the bonus. Inbounds to Reeser. She's going to be pressured by Crandall. And a dribble, also double team there by Curley. They get it over the timeline. Osterley, little out of control, ball comes loose. Weekly passes on ahead. Here comes Crandall. She's going to drive, stop, put it in, lay up. Good. That ended a little bit of a drought for the OKC Storm there. They, they went a few minutes without scoring. And here comes the Chap Chariots again. Kristen Hawk takes it over the timeline, drives it all the way, kicks back behind her. Here's Crombie, left-handed three, no good. Reeser in there to battle for the rebound. She goes to the ground, but I believe that's going to be a foul on her as she tried to get the ball. She collided with Mariah Curley. They're going to call the foul on Curley. Oh, they call it on Curley. Boy, that could have gone either way. Both players went up for the ball, and maybe because she went to the ground, the official was quicker to call it on the opposition there. 
38-35, Chariots will be passing in under their own basket, trailing by three, just six minutes left in this one. Nemps, the inbounds, puts up the little jumper, rolls off the right side and into the hands of Curley. Boy, that was a missed opportunity. Yeah, couldn't get it to roll right there. Here's Weekly, long three is no good. And rebound comes off to Crandall. There's a feed inside to LaPat, but that time, Nemps was forced to foul as LaPat had her sealed. She reached over the top. And she has called for that personal. Five team fouls now. That was a great offensive rebound by the Storm there to chase that ball down, knowing that they're in a tight game now that uh, every possession counts. Substitutions coming in now for the Chap Chariots. Wow, there was a collision in there, and that's going to be a charge, I believe. Handsome had set up. and Wait, they call it the other way. They called that on the Storm. All right, well, maybe she was pushed. I don't know. I, all I saw was her hit the ground. player going down. That's unfortunate. Poor Handsome. She's been involved in several collisions, and just none of them have been called her way. Ball is knocked loose, but right there is Hawk to come up with the ball, and then we've got a timeout. Good timeout there by Coach Osterley, and uh, 5.33 to go. We're going to take maybe our final break here, full timeout. We'll be back with the final 5.33 to see who wins this 6A girls gold ball after this. When my body needs relief, I real time it. I'd like to introduce you to my knockout pain formula, real time pain relief. It's soothing lotion, it's rich in nature's ingredients and helps me manage discomfort day or night. Mmm, and it smells great too. From muscle strains to soreness to simple back aches and arthritis, real time it and knock out your pain. It works for me and it and welcome back, exciting 6A girls, 18U gold ball action here. We've got a close one, Jeremy. The uh, Chap Chariots have cut it down to three. They've had it down to one. And they've got the ball now with a chance to either cut it to one or tie it. Yeah, they've had a, uh, it's been a while since they've been this close. They got it to one while ago. Uh, I don't know if the Chariots have had the lead in this game at all, actually. There's Green and Scott. Up to Nemps, and there's a wide open cutter down the lane. Oh, she hit it, threw it too hard off the backboard. Had a wide open shot on the cut there, but couldn't convert. 38-35, down at the other end. The three, too much from Weekly, But the rebound comes off, Handsome with the ball. She drives to her left, puts up the floater. It's no good, but she draws the foul. Missed opportunities. I, you can't get more open than that. That was a beautiful play. Beautiful Did that backdoor back cut, yeah, and... and all she had to do was lay it off the glass, maybe got uh, a little too excited and had that momentum, and the ball just came off the backboard a little too strong and rolled off the rim. Well, being in this game, uh, they haven't seen many open opportunities like that at the goal, so she was a little surprised that she didn't have any contest. First shot is good for Handsome. 39-35. Second shot, try to build that lead. It's up to four now with 5.08 to go. It's no good, and there's a rebound by Nymphs. Nymphs throws it over to her sister. Rachel Nymphs with the ball. She throws a long pass to her sister, and back over the timeline comes Lena Nyhart. Nyhart's going to go all the way, goes around LaPat, but unable to convert. LaPat comes off with the board. Here comes the storm. Another missed opportunity there. Got the ball all the way to the basket, just not able to get the roll. Curley, a very cerebral player. She pulls the ball out, going to set her team up. They're up by four. They're not afraid to take a little time off the clock if they need to until they find the shot that they want or the matchup that they want. LaPat trying to work down low on the younger Nymphs. She's unable to get her position there. Weekly's going to dribble, but there's the nice pick and roll. Beautiful play. LaPat able to go down the right side of that lane after she set the pick, and Weekly finds her there. And the lead now up to six. Yeah, you got to imagine, imagine you're going to see Crombie come back in the game here in a second. She's been uh, trying to get a little minute or two rest before she try to finish this game, I would imagine. Rachel Nemps kind of stuck in the lane there. She's got to watch a three-second call. There's a drive, and there's going to be a foul. Going to be free throw opportunities for Lena Nyhart as she got stuck inside the lane there just a little bit but went up for the shot and got hit across the arms. That is the seventh team foul, so rest of this game – Chap Chariots will be shooting free throws on any fouls. First shot, rolls in. 
41-36, five point game now. 358, just over halfway through this final period. The winner claims the 6A gold ball and a date in the showdown series with another gold ball winner, the Noah Jags. Second shot, no good. Rebound comes off the floor to Crandall. Here comes Curley the other way for OKC. Passes it on ahead. Crandall lost it there for a second, but gathers it back in. Curley on the drive. She's got LaPat. LaPat drives and throws up a wild shot on the left. Can't get it to go. Rebound to Lena Nyhart. Nyhart, ball is stolen away. Beautiful play by Curley to get that one. She drives, draws the foul, and the senior will be at the free throw line to try to build her team's lead. Some sloppy play there and passes. They, the Chariots are coming away with rebounds that they need, but so many times they do something positive and then right after that throw it away or do something to allow the storm back into this. Missed opportunities. <laughs> First shot is no good, and they can go both ways on missed opportunities speaking, that time. Speaking of opportunities, that's the opportunity for the Storm to push it to a six-point game, possibly seven, but she misses the first, so it's guaranteed to keep it a, at least a two-possession ball game, make or miss on this free throw. Shot's no good, but <laughs> early on you could see Bridget Crombie put her foot in the lane early, so she's going to get another opportunity. 41-36, 3.36 to go. Mariah Curley, the chance to build that lead after she missed that free throw, but the violation. Second shot, no good. Rebound comes off to Karen Nemes. Well, there's a trap over in the corner, and boy, they're pushing her further and further away from her own basket. Passes the ball up ahead. Knocked out of bounds by Mashiah Johnson. Yeah, you think they're going to try to get the ball in Crombie's hands here. Down five. They need a bucket. Crombie's been the one to give them the answer. Kristen Hawk going to take it over the timeline. She takes it all the way to the three-point line. Stops. Kicks it back out to Osterley. Osterley going to dribble around, try to find an opening. She had Crombie on the cutter, but well aware there was Maddie Crandall, and she comes away with the steal. And 3.08 to go. That's a big one. 41-36. Chariots trailing by five, OKC with the ball. That was a big defensive stop there. Ball goes over to Johnson. Johnson out to Weekly. Weekly dribbles, spins. She's going to drive down the right side of the lane, put it up off the backboard. Good. Nice kiss off the glass. Lead up to seven now. Osterley bringing it the other way. She has Crombie wide open down low and puts it in. 43-38. Keeps it within five, two and a half minutes to go. 2.34 to go. Chap Chariots hanging around, they will not go away. Storm can't put them away. Both teams having opportunities to do what they want, but just unable to capitalize. Curly over to Weekly. We've seen Weekly can hit the deep threes. She can also drive. She just hit the last shot for the Storm. Here she goes, driving down the lane, puts up the right-handed jumper. No good. Rebound by Nymphs. But her pass is Aaron, as we said it earlier. Right there is Crandall to put it back in. Maddie Crandall. They'll do something good and then turn around and erase that with a bad pass or a bad play. Crombie has to save it, throws it, goes back in the hand of Nymphs. Here's a three-point opportunity. It is in and out. Rebound comes off and tied up. Jump ball, going to go to the Storm. Yeah, they got the stop they needed, got the rebound, and but uh, the Storm read where they were going to go with the pass and jumped right in front of it and got the easy layup. Somehow Hawk ended up with the ball on the perimeter and had an open look, but that three rattled around and came out. 45-38, the lead is seven, and now time starting to be the enemy of the Chap Chariots. 145 to go. Yeah, it looks like they're going to extend the defense out a little bit, at least a half court. Try not to let them just run all the clock off. Way to slide your feet over Lena Nyhart to get in front of Curley, but Curley drives down the lane anyway. Flips it to Maddie Crandall, who puts it in. And then Curley knocks the ball out of bounds as Nyhart tried to bring the ball up for the Chariots. They're down nine, and with 125 to go, they're going to need some luck of the Irish or something to happen because it's starting to get into dangerous territory. Reeser over the half-court line. She dribbles, looking for an opening. 
There's a pass over the middle. Crombie, nice pass to her teammate. Thought that Crombie would take it all the way, but instead she made a pass across the lane to Lena Nyhart, who put it in, lead back down to seven. So, Jeremy, with 113 to go, you're the chap chariots. How do you come back and, and at least tie this thing up? Well, at this point, you're both in the, in the bonus. Uh, there's not enough time to just play back defense. I think you're going to have to start fouling here in a little bit and just hope they miss free throws, and you're going to have to execute on the offensive side. We've seen the Storm miss some free throws here already in this quarter, so that may be the strategy of Coach Osterley with the Chap Chariots. Yeah, you're going to have to you're going to have to pick your poison here either because you know they're going to come down and try to dribble off time off the clock, and at this point down by seven, men and 13, you don't have that as an, as an option at this point if you're the Chap Chariots. So you're going to have to extend your defense full court, see if you can get a steal in the backcourt. They possibly may wait to foul and see if they can get a 10-second call first. But uh, – they don't have too much time they, they can waste trying to figure out what to do. OKC Storm with the inbounds. Ball comes in to Mariah Curley. She gives it back to Amaya Weekly. On up ahead and wide open is Johnson, but in the up and under, she can't get it to go on the reverse. And the Chariots come away with an opportunity under a minute to go. Ball almost lost, she picks it up on ahead to Nymphs. Nymphs gonna dribble the ball outside, stop at the three point line, try to spin and pivot, looking for some help. Reeser had the ball, but it is knocked away and back the other way comes Weekly. She's gonna take it all the way in. Ball is blocked from behind, but she is fouled. Great Good hustle. hustle play. Yeah, Nyhart came back, but not able to do it cleanly. And that's gonna put Amaya Weekly on the line. Well, the Chariots got what they wanted to do out of the timeout. They got the stop, come down on the offensive side, and just couldn't execute, end up turning the ball over. You got to figure in that situation, if you're Crombie, you got to go get the ball, and you got to take over the game here. You, you've been the leader here in this game. You've been the main scorer, but also been the distributor, making the right passes. But she's got to be involved. Absolutely. 48-40, 41 seconds to go. And as we said, just so many missed opportunities. First shot is good. Weekly makes him pay. 49-40, last shot rather. 49-49 point deficit. Ball's gonna stay this in with 34 seconds to go. And you gotta think Chap's gonna be looking for threes now. Yeah, and if you're OKC, you gotta make sure, you gotta know where Crombie is at all times. End of the game for the Storm, Adriana Teal, as Mashiah Johnson comes out. She gave them some good minutes. Here's the inbounds. Ball comes to Nyhart. Nyhart's going to drive to her left. They're not going to go for the three. She drives, misses the two-point bucket. But then out top is Osterley. Her three, no good. Rebound to Nyhart. She turns, puts it up, rattles off the side, and into the hands of Daisy Lapat. Lapat kicks it out to Crandall, and that might do it. 49-40, just 15 seconds to go. In the able hands of Curley, the senior dribbles it up. She's going to pass it. Ball is tipped. There is a steal by Nymphs, but they're running out of time. Just six seconds to go. Puts up the three. Oh. It rims out. Lapat with the rebound, and that will do it. 49 to 40, the OKC Storm with the program's 90th overall gold ball. They claim the 6A gold ball title game. Congratulations to the Storm. Great effort by the Chap Chariots. This means the Storm will advance in the showdown series tomorrow. We don't have times on that yet, but they will be playing the Noah Jaguars, other gold ball winners tonight. And we'll be anxious to see that one. Coming up next, we've got boys, 18U gold ball basketball, the Tyler Heat and the Dallas HSAA Angels. Hope you can stick around and join us. Make sure you uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Got over 1,000 subscribers on our channel. We'd love for you to also click the notification bell. That way you'll know every single time your teams are playing, and we'll be able to bring that to you. Thanks for joining us. Scott Staten for Jeremy Caldwell. It's going to be Jeremy and our good friend Paul Gilmore. We're up with the next game right after this.